Hey guys, I'm Shane and uh, this is my wife Sarah and we'd like to show you around our uh, 10 acre property. Uh, we've lived here six years and we'd like to show you guys what we've done in that time. Come on Tula. One of the first things we did when we moved into this property was we planted a bunch of fruit trees along the fence line here. Um, this is one of them, pears, which are obviously starting to work well, finally. Very excited about having an orchard. So we did uh, nectarines, variety of pears, some plums, and then on the other side, we did apple trees and a cherry tree. And this is the first year we're getting a really good haul of pears and same with apples. And these are the Macintosh apples that we planted, which are doing awesome this year. We were a little worried the last couple of years. We kind of thought um, that the apples weren't going to work out, but this year has proved us wrong. They are flourishing and we have a ton of them. I'm excited to see how they taste. So one of the things that we did in order to get them to pollinate correctly was uh, we staggered them. So the first one is the Macintosh. The second one I think is a Honeycrisp. And then the third is a Red Delicious, and it just kind of keeps cycling and rotating. This year we got a lot of Macintosh, not really any of the other, but we'll just have to kind of see where it goes from well, here. Last year we shot a, a video basically showing everybody what we had, were doing and how far we had come in five years, and now this being six years. But one of the cooler things that happened, we'll see these uh, yellow flowers back here. Uh, somebody who watched the video said that they were pretty sure that they were Jerusalem artichokes. And uh, so we looked into it, and I think that's sure enough what they are. So... You guys are pretty smart and uh, those comments definitely helped us identify what these were, so. Another one of the things we did is Shane went through the woods here on this part of the property and made trails so we could actually walk through it whenever the kids could run around and play and actually get to enjoy nature. Things we discovered on our property was elderberry plants. We have plenty of them throughout the property. So yeah, basically the entire east side of our property is uh, kind of like a wooded groves of trees area. It's really cool. A lot of wildlife live out here. Uh, a lot of deer, you know, that I'd like to someday have the dream of harvesting. That's not funny. It is a little. It is a little. But anyways, yeah, so it's really, really pretty. And, and I, uh, I mowed a bunch of trails back here so that the kids can come back. And you can go for walks with the dogs. And Sarah likes coming back here. It's just really peaceful. And nice it's a little mosquito-y it's also nice to get back in here and get a little bit away from that road i apologize for that being so loud uh we're filming this on a sunday night so i'm sure everybody's coming back from their cabins and everywhere else and so the road's kind of busy so right in the center of our property we have a beautiful pond it's about one acre um you can see it from here Having a pond is really nice when you have ducks because then they can come around and swim and drink as much as they want. You don't have to deal with watering them constantly. However, this year we've been in a severe drought, so the pond is really low, which we'll show you when we get around to the other side. a ton of wild ferns that grow all over the property which they're not only beautiful but they also um, improve air quality so they're really good to have around um, and we have a ton of them so our air quality better be good especially with all the smoke from all the places this year so this area back here is kind of on the north side of the pond it's about a one acre field that uh, I mowed down and um, we were trying to figure out what to do with it, so I had actually asked you guys last year what we should do with it, and you guys came up with a lot of really good ideas. What we ended up doing is, as we got to fall, I uh, planted in a bunch of um, radishes back here, and uh, that really helped break the ground up a little bit, and, um, you know, I think I think a lot of the wildlife also enjoyed coming in and, and nibbling on some of that from time to time. But uh, we still haven't decided 100% what we're going to do with it. I, I feel like Sarah and I actually, we kind of discussed it the other day. I feel like we had kind of a miscommunication earlier in the year. I had expressed that I wanted to 
fill it full of pumpkins and I thought she had basically kind of said ah let's just wait a year and see how it goes and uh, I didn't realize she was doing that because well we had so many other projects going on she just didn't want me to be stressed with one more thing so that's okay it's basically just a grass field this year uh, we've used a lot of the clippings as kind of like hay and bedding for the animals and stuff so it's been a, be a pretty big positive area so far and I think it will into the future as well so so this is the pond and as you can see it's about 23 inches down we measured it because we were curious so it's a bummer that you know the drought's been so bad that it's so far down but i know it'll come back you know it's just one bad year with no rain <laughs> and it looks a lot prettier when it's full if you've watched our other videos we have some of us swimming out there because it was so much nicer when it was full Last year we had talked about putting an herb garden in this area and Shane had started getting it all prepped for it, but then we just got busy with other projects. But I promise it is coming. I'm excited to see what comes of it as soon as we get everything planted. And it's gonna be one of those things that comes back every single year. So it's gonna be super beneficial as soon as we uh, finish it up. Here you can really see how far the water's down. It's supposed to be up here, all the way up to the bank. You know, and all the way across, you can see how low it is. The top of the bank where the sand meets the grass. So, yeah, it's really a bummer that it, it kind of is like this. But that's just how years go. So, you know, I'm sure next year we'll probably have too much water. This is our weed-free pumpkin patch that we've been making here. Believe it or not, it's actually completely full of pumpkins. So that'll be something really cool to... Be able to show you guys in the next couple of weeks or months uh, how that's developing but yeah you come out here in the morning and you look and it's just solid flowers all the way across pretty much so kind of a neat experiment to try and uh and uh deal with you know dealing with weeds can be uh be really tricky and take a lot of time and and uh any anything you can do to just you know plant something and walk away come back and harvest that that works out a lot better the newest addition would be the permanent greenhouse, which we spent the majority of the season working on. It's turned out absolutely gorgeous, better than what I had imagined in my head. So why don't you guys come in and we'll show you around. We're still working on a few things. As you can see, we're using snow fencing, but we are gonna put in um, actual fencing here. But come on through. We have a bunch of raised beds in here. We're gonna probably do double next year. And then we also added some planter boxes on the outside, which we did green beans in this season. And we do have some on the outside, which I'll show you in a little bit, but you can come into the actual greenhouse now. And all of this was repurposed windows. And we just kind of collected them and then Shane came up with this design and built it and it turned out way better than I had ever imagined. And we keep adding and adding and adding. As soon as we think we're done with this, we're like, oh, you know what? We could fill the space with this. So that's how we came up with the extra um, raised bed, which we haven't filled yet. We actually came up with two extra ones in here and then also a garden bench for me, which is gonna come in super handy in the spring more so than any other time because I can put my plants all together without getting the house messy so this will be nice. Um, it's also got a nice set of doors that we haven't closed yet. We have them permanently open because we're in and out of here so much but we're going to be able to seal this up tight in the winter and then we can get started in the spring way earlier with our plants because this will hold heat way better than um, the plastic wrap ones that we had. So I am really excited to see what this does for us in the future and what other ideas we come up with because I have a feeling this is going to be one of those places we just keep improving and improving. On the outside of the greenhouse, we put planter
starter boxes on this side and the other side and we put rhubarb in them. So I like rhubarb because it's one of those things that you only have to plant once and it comes back every year. And these I think are gonna be super beneficial in the future. We're gonna have a lot of cool stuff growing in there. And then if you look behind me, I, we have a ton of wild raspberries, which was a bonus of living here. Um, they're literally that whole back part and well into the woods, there's plenty of wild raspberries in there. This is the barn where we keep all of the animals. This side right here is the duck pen where they come in and out whenever they want. We let them out in the morning and lock them up at sundown and it works pretty well for us. Follow me over to the other side and I'll show you where the chickens are. is where we house the chickens when they're not free ranging. We have one pen right here for when we do baby chicks. Um, this way we can incorporate them and they can get to know each other without harming each other. And then right next to it we have where the big chickens go. So as soon as they're old enough to be in here they get set in here and this has worked really well. We have in the past put the ducks and chickens together we didn't have any problems doing so, but we just decided this year to separate them and that's worked really well for us. Let's head into the inside of the barn. So this is the inside of the barn. And in here we have the separate coops, one for the ducks, which is right over here. We put um, nesting boxes in here for future chickens, but it's kind of funny you actually find a couple of duck eggs in there every once in a while. There isn't any right now, but there's been several times where there has been. And back here we have where we keep our chickens. This, we have one we're roosting up there right now. Um, so we do have this section, which also wraps around into that section. We do have a little hatch that we can close when we want to, which works out really nicely. And for the chickens, we have a few layer boxes right here. We do need to build a couple of more, but these do work fine. I like that they're inside so I don't have to crawl through the coop to pick up eggs every day. I can just open the hatch, reach in and get them, and then put fresh straw down so the eggs are always clean. So that's always a nice benefit. All right, well, let's head over and show them the uh, convertible greenhouses. Yes. So these are convertible greenhouses. We call them that because they used to be plastic wrapped, but the plastic wrapping didn't last very long. So then we put this netting on it to keep the chickens and ducks out. And that's worked really well for us. And in this particular one, we have our um, cucumbers and our tomato plants, which are doing really great. Just kind of overtaking it. And I like this because it, it gets a lot of airflow in and out of it and things can climb up where they want to. This one over here is where we do our zucchinis. And we like to keep them netted in because the ducks have torn apart the zucchini plants in the past. So last year we planted double what we actually have in here and it was kind of funny because when I started planting this year I thought in my head without discussing with Shane, I'm like I'm going to do about half because last year it got so big I couldn't even walk through it. So when I came out and started planting Shane was kind of like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> You're using about half the space. But as you can see I made the right call because it is overflowing again and things are looking awesome. Well, no farm would be complete without an above ground pool, which is exactly where Sarah and I are heading right now to enjoy a couple of adult beverages and watch the sun go down. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and, uh, you know, check out some of our other videos. Have a good night. Bye.